It is scotch tape and scissors, my friends. The boat is taking on water here, but we continue. Still internet issues, now computer issues. I can't even log into object. <laughs> but we continue. We continue to sail forward here on this beautiful sunny day in my mind. Outside, a little kind of cloudy and rainy. Your weather update, courtesy of your international art program, Artist Journal, May 22nd, 2024. My name's Adrian Pocabelli. Let's go. So, who knows what cosmic forces are at work here uh, that, are, that are trying to block this program. Uh, who knows? Uh, but we're continuing here. And uh, so, all to say... I am taking on water, and a uh, big shout-out, actually, to Hasdrubal Waffle for the hilarious pompadour. Maybe if the internet plays nicely, we can look at that PNG uh, that uh, Waffles put out. Waffles has new work on Object 2, which is super exciting, but let's look at Kyle Flemmer first with his head-turning work, this very fun work. It kind of looks like a glitch ROM. I'm pretty sure it is. Screen recording and sprites from McDonald's Treasureland. Adventure, 1993. It's like, why haven't we seen McDonald's done before? It probably has been, but I've never seen it. And uh, it's just made to order, so to speak. Uh, and there's a Hamburglar. Quite a beautiful rendition. I mean, really, I'm kind of always back to, you know, I think a strange thing with the Nike. And, you know, like if I was Nike, creative director or art director at Nike, I'd be like, hey, Maybe, strange thing, you should come over here and do some work for us. If I was McDonald's, I'd be kind of like Kyle Flemmer. Uh, this is pretty interesting. We might have to do this. We might need to turn some heads here in the mass media. And so, uh, just uh, really cool work here uh, from Kyle Flemmer. And, of course, uh, this is a glitch ROM. Uh, 640 by 448 and uh, scaled up by 2. I picked one up. You see how much trouble I'm having? I had to go on to Safari. You see the little uh, warning sign? For some reason, Chrome is not letting my Kukai wallet log in. So I had to log in on Safari, weirdly enough, through another account, and then I sent this over. So I don't know what's going on, if anybody else is having issues, uh, but just so you know. So I picked one of these up. I th still available. A, a Tezos 50 for that super cool uh, McDonald's work. So that happened. Here's another one by Kyle, continuity error. And this is also a screen recording, interesting, of Virtua Fighter 1995 from Sega, 32X glitched with real-time corruptor and recomposed an ace sprite. Was the last one recomposed an ace sprite? So very interesting last detail there. Of course, ace sprite, for those who are unfamiliar, is kind of like, I'd say, your main pixel art software. If you're looking to make pixel art on a desktop uh, or a laptop, uh, Aspirate is probably uh, what you want, what you want to use. Some people use Photoshop, which is kind of challenging. Sometimes just to get like weird things like a square brush in Photoshop can be surprisingly, you have to go through a few more, jump through a few more hoops than you might expect. Let's put it that way. So you might be better off just with Aspirate if that's what you're thinking of doing. Again, on a laptop or desktop. Uh, so here's Continuity Error, uh, edition of 15. We're not going to worry if this loads up down here. Uh, so just kind of a cool work here. Uh, continue. You know, another variation on this whole glitch uh, ROM. Uh, we don't, I haven't seen too many continues. We've seen, I uh, 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 can't remember Haiti Rockette's final work of uh, that, I think it was called 99 and 1. It was the start screen. That was brilliant. That was brilliant. So here we have the continue, uh, which is pretty cool too. Continuity error. Great title from Kyle Flemmer. And here we have just a recent work that I had missed, Venus, since we're looking at Kyle Flemmer's work. Framed and enlarged in an ace sprite. I thought a nice, uh, nice small work here. I'm sure this is less than a kilobyte. This is probably like, you know, 500 bytes, which I... Now, we're going to look at this in a second, and even with the haircut, the hair here continues to be an ongoing challenge. Uh, but 
we're not going to worry about that. We're just going to make sure this records because I was actually having uh, warnings before encoding error, et cetera. So back to Bitcoin. We're going to look at this in a second uh, in a few tabs, but the fees are still low. They were at 10 V-bytes. I actually have been seeing eight pretty uh, recently. And if Bitcoin takes off here, uh, you, do, you know, get on the train while you can if it's something that you're interested in doing. Uh, bec- like, I want Bitcoin to go down. Like, that's where I'm at right now because I want to put more work on there and I don't want to see $100,000 Bitcoin tomorrow and all of a sudden my, you know... And so all to say, I put up a 9 kilobyte work I'll show it to you in a second, in, in a few tabs. I brought it up on Gamma, and it only cost me $22, which is really cheap. So I was paying up to $10 a, a kilobyte. This is like around $225, $250. So, you know, so works like this might cost you like a buck or two bucks, believe it or not, maybe two bucks on Bitcoin. Uh, so just so you know. 15 by 15 pixel close up. It might even be cheaper. How cool is that by Senshi Minako? Uh, or close up of Senshi Minako. So let's continue here. I don't know what the sales are. F- only 15 cents, 15 Tezo cents. Uh, so thank you. Uh, no comments on the last show. It's only been a few shows that that's happened. We do have a lot on uh, Twitter. Uh, but interesting. Uh, so for those artists, like, you know, there are different ways to get your name out there. Uh, feel free. I mean, for, you know, for what it's worth, feel free to leave comments. Uh, it gets your, I read most of them, if not all of them sometimes. Uh, also, but here, let's see if this loads up. Mega internet, computer, uh, login issues today. Andrea Oliveira Cibola, who we started with last episode, this work here. This very cool work. I loved your view on everything, especially about not needing a PhD in art to like the work. I'll take the opportunity to leave an image of the original scanned object here. So very cool. Thank you for sharing that, Andre. Uh, So scanning the object. So, I mean, pretty complex, isn't it? This is a scanned object that has, you know, found its way into kind of a pixel art piece, so to speak, or at least pixelated piece. Object, thank you. Always wonderful. Well, great to have you. <laughs> great to have you on board, Object, on our pirate ship here. Uh, thank you. You're doing wonderful work as well, Object, although I am having challenges with the wallet logging in. I'm not sure, is that a Tezos thing? It could be my computer. Uh, maybe it's Kukai. I don't know, but I've for days, I've been. it could be my Chrome. Uh, browser for some reason, uh, but who knows? Uh, but just so you know, in case in case anybody else is having it, if nobody else is having the problem, then it's definitely me. Silva Santos, thank you for the mentions and the words. And yeah, Silva Santos uh, continues to just uh, iterate forward in a beautiful evolution. There, Retro Manny, so awesome to see one of my absolute favorite artists starting the show today. Have been a fan of Sabo Lander, which is uh, Andre Oliveira Cibola, for which, for a while now, and happy to say I have an awesome one of one too. And of course, enjoying the show. Thank you, Ilya Zura. Thank you for the comment. Brain dead. This was the first version of it. I think it explains a lot, right? And I think there was another work with a red book with a heart on it that maybe was a Bible. I'm actually. I looked at that and I thought. Uh, I wasn't quite sure if I'd gotten any further on the explanation, Um, but uh, I love these little printers here, and it's beautiful artwork. Uh, Kels, awesome to hear from you. Uh, Thank you so much for the mention. You are more than welcome, and thank you for the comment and the ongoing support, Kels. Uh, Denise Sanchez, thanks for sharing my work. We all hope to see your reviews. Thank you. Happy and sunny weekend, and back to you, uh, Denise Sanchez. Uh, Sunny weekend to you, and keep up the great uh, abstract artwork there. Elena is bored again. Nice one. Thank you. Frederick Schultz, thank you. Yut, good episode. Thank you. Frank Kappa, GE from Paris. Dear Pokebelly, thank you, Frank Kappa. Great to hear from you. Tozart, really good. So, thank you. Thank you, everybody. And Hitsuono, thanks for mentioning literally me. You're really... Uh, You really were on spot when you said poetry and code must inevitably unite. My original intention in the game was to make a world where you could do poetry and code and both would be connected. I lacked creativity to make it happen, though. 
Well, I keep going back to, I think I mentioned this a show ago, or two shows, or maybe it's just in a dream. I'm not sure, but there's a very, I think it was maybe on a space. And there's, by the way, there's no space today. It is the first Wednesday. I'm not going to have a space since we started. Uh, but I, this ship is taken on water here, and I'm still no further on solving my internet issues, etc. So, Runetune, I messaged him, no show, uh, and everything. And these are spam accounts, by the way. Uh, so, I, but what I was going to say, a very, very important sort of uh, uh, idea on inspiration, let's call it, which is from Plato's Phaedrus. Uh, and there's the four forms of divine madness. And <laughs> as I fix my hair and to comment on the Phaedrus, uh, the, uh, there's a line in there, and I have to find it. But basically, uh, the line goes to paraphrase, because I haven't read it for maybe five years, maybe longer, is the inspired madman will utterly eclipse the uh all the technical know-how of uh you know of a well practiced and you know refined poet so to speak to paraphrase the inspired madman will utterly eclipse okay so in in that respect if you don't feel like you have the creativity well maybe the inspiration the possession as they would say uh we'll have to bring up the four forms of divine madness uh, from the Plato's Phaedrus there. Anyway, thank you for the comment and for the provocation, Hitsuono. Uh, also, in the community, thank you everybody for posting. Check this out. I uh, and Watercolor plotting. So, as you can see here, I uh, always... So, the dots go down and then they put water. Pretty interesting. Interesting. I mean... Who would have thought of that? Watercolor plotting. We are living in wild times indeed, Trippy Collector. Uh, KT, a uh, new open edition. Okay, awesome. Thank you for posting. Sarah Kretschmer. We're actually going to look at this work. I saw Sarah on last, I think it was Friday, where there was an opening at this photographics, a massive opening uh, at this uh, photographica museum or something, photographica and hilariously, I had never messaged Sarah, who I've known for uh, five years ago was the last. I looked on the messages because I messaged her after saying, hey, great to see you. I hadn't messaged her in five years. So I saw her randomly at that opening. So that was hilarious. Anyway, we're going to look at this also in the AI section. Nice work uh, from Sarah. So we'll take a closer look there. And look at this. Legio with a more interesting work. And I have 150 tabs here, so I'd love to show all of this in the show, but thank you. At least we, here we get a taste, and then, you know, everybody has a shot here, uh, or at least just gets more visibility. Let's put it this way. Hey, Pokebelly, this is Yacht, and also thank you, AI, that creates 12,000 new kinds of neurotoxins. <laughs> uh, Yacht, whose work I've shown here before. I really want to see your thoughts on this artwork called The Greatness of Reflection. And what I would say is it looks really cool, and this is kind of yacht style, which is kind of black and white. Interesting, seems photographic, but not, and kind of surreal, as you see, kind of dreamlike here. Interesting texture, so I'd say pretty cool. Interesting title, too, uh, yacht, so very cool would be my, you know, and I'm kind of back to, you know, maybe not too many colors. Again, Bitcoin's not for everyone. Uh, but you might want to consider, because uh, it might, the, the only reason I say that is because we may be heading into a time where it becomes prohibitively expensive to mint anything. I think we're weeks, if not months, and maybe a year or two away from there, uh, Max. So it's sort of like, uh, you know, and theoretically, Bitcoin is forever, or at least for a long time, maybe a hundred years, a thousand, who knows. Skull Takes, thank you. Love this piece by Blank Embrace. Yeah, very interesting work here. Ilya Bliznets, great to hear from you again. The Inner Child, this is on Saul. Very cool kind of psychological work. 
and Joe Howell. Splish Splash, free mint on Arzora in my low bias collection. Very cool. An abstract from Joe Howell. Thank you. And Kurt Hustle Collective. Awesome. I remember this piece. And uh, just an awesome artist. And of course, Simulacro. And I think, I think we're starting to get an Ernesto. I think we we're getting into, thank you for posting everybody. I think we're getting into uh, last episode's works. So forgive me. And yes, indeed, we because we saw Blue Retina there. Okay, awesome. Thank you, everybody. Back to Human Boy. <laughs> Back to this developing story, this breaking story with Human Boy. Uh, check that out. 1.3 million views uh, for Human Boy. So surfing the algorithm was what I was thinking to myself. 14,000 retweets. So very interestingly, Human Boy has tapped into something. It's quite fascinating. Here's another one, blink and you'll miss it, 356,000. Consistently, you know, getting over 100,000 views here. Uh, here's some trees. Well, here's 53,000 just released yesterday. You know, on its way, 600 retweets. So uh, very impressive on this breaking story. And look at, so I think when this all started, Human Boy was at something like I'd guess 1,500 to 2,000 followers. What feels like a week later, uh, Human Boy is rapidly uh, getting more followers, 7,862. And so this is going to be really interesting to watch. 14,000 retweets. I mean, just think about that. And so getting, you know, surfing the algorithm as I was thinking here, and just doing stills and everything. So really tapping into something here. Here, 147,000. Uh, super impressive from Human Boy. So big congrats. We will continue to follow that story. Now, we've been following the auction market here, or the contemporary art market. There has been a, a noted slowdown. We've been commenting on it. We've been finding uh, stories about that. The same reporter, Kachi Kazakina, who kind of, I would argue, was kind of breaking that story. I found it remarkably quiet in other parts of the media, but Kachi Kazakina was kind of blowing the lid and couldn't post enough stories about how the uh, contemporary art market was crashing. However, in fairness, here she is again. Christie's 20th century art sale totals $413 million as the market exhales with relief. Exhales with relief, except for a fight over a large 1964 Warhol that sold for $35 million. It was a relatively uneventful evening. So I have a theory here, and I think it's it shows how actually how much the financial markets and the art the high end art market uh, actually they're kind of sim they're, it's an asset class. Okay, it's a financial asset class, and what I think's going on is something that, say, if you follow crypto, or even if you follow the stock market, you're going to see a similar thing going on. What's going on in the stock market? The Magnificent Seven, Amazon, you know, uh, all of the, you know, Facebook, they have been kind of leading the charge, although with fits and starts and sometimes pulling back while the market goes ahead. But overall, the market is really favoring liquidity right? Or not the small things, but the big things. And we see the same thing in the crypto market, where the big coins like the Solanas, the, you know, pick your coin, are Bitcoin, Ethereum, are making all the moves in a sense. And all the kind of side coins, the, the altcoins uh, or the smaller coins aren't really doing as much, which is not typical, right? So, uh, so it's interesting, and I think it all has to do with the investor appetite right now, especially big money, which moves the markets, is all about liquidity and solid investments. So therefore, Warhol, a safe bet. It will retain its value or something close to it versus, you know, some edgy contemporary art thing that's come out in the last five or ten years that is untested. So I think that's what's going on here. Uh, and this is a beautiful painting, by the way. I don't know who did this, uh, but this is a beautiful painting uh, right there. Uh, Monet leads Sotheby's $235 million modern art sale, but Carrington steals the show. That was one busy week. So this is the headlines of the week. 
interestingly, the 10 minute bidding war for, so remember, and we saw the 40, I think this went for $35 million or something wild like that. Uh, by the numbers, a breakdown of results from Sotheby's Modern Arts sale. Yeah, it was $28.5 million for the Leonara, Leonara Carrington, Lenora Carrington. That is incredible. So that work right here. Uh, and so that was a low estimate of 350000 for Maria Ber Berrios La Sena. I think that's evening in Italian uh, or maybe dinner. Maybe that's dinner. Anyway. Uh, interesting what's going on in the contemporary, uh, in the, in the art market, uh, the trad art market, I guess we'd call it rip cash. There's a simpler way to look at Bitcoin ordinals and fully on chain art on Ethereum. The analogous way to explain the idea is through the concept of what I'd like to call infrastructure as canvas. This is very interesting and we can't read the whole thing, but we can take a few, we can, there's a takeaway here which is uh, Ripcash is comparing what we're doing, say, on ordinals or on-chain art, where we're kind of inscribing on this blockchain that's kind of moving, you know, this, infra this blockchain infrastructure, and we're kind of putting stamping here or post, you know, inserting data here and there. This is similar to graffiti, is how Ripcash, and, and, you know, like, and a, and a road. A uh, nice uh, analogy. Usually infrastructure refers to large-scale public projects like pipelines, railways, tunnels, bridges, and even power and fiber optic grids. But lately I've been mulling over various ways I see infrastructure being incorporated into art. Consider a railway network, for example. Graffiti can be displayed on the sides of rail cars and inside walls of railway tunnels. Uh, and then, and this is the kind of actual contemporary art, Desert X, is this uh, Matt Johnson's sleeping figure train car sculpture at Desert X. Uh, this is, I think, the kind of art that is actually go suffering right now in the traditional art market. Uh, to overgeneralize, and who knows? I, I'm just speculating there. Uh, so now we can't read all of this. Um, here's the Berlin Wall. You know, again, infrastructure. So pretty interesting. Now, uh, and now comparing this to Bitcoin and, and Ethereum as major global infrastructure projects. Uh, so repurposing crypto challenges traditional norms and embodies the essence of infrastructure as canvas, returning to the analogy of a freight train for artists, part of crypto's value lies in the infrastructure, which is much less dangerous than sneaking into private rail yards, given it, yeah, it's true, given its decentralized and permissionless setup. Uh, so kind of like graffiti, uh, very cool. And I was looking at this work here and I was thinking, man, this would be so cheap to mint. I don't know where this has been minted, 808 on-chain collector, but yeah, uh, like this is only two colors. It's maybe, I'm guessing like 64 by 64. Let me bring up the mempool. Uh, let's see what we're dealing with here. I didn't leave it open because it's at, at 15 which is a little higher. This morning it was at eight. And again, I think when it was at, I, I put in like 13 or 14, or sorry, actually I put in 11. I had to put in the 11 at uh, with gamma, and that turns into about $2 per kilobyte, maybe 225. Amazing, amazing, amazing. Because all of a sudden you can start to say, whoa, I could put in a 30 kilobyte file. I could potentially put in a 100 kilobyte file yeah, it would cost me 200 bucks, but then I'd have a 100 kilobyte file, you know, on Bitcoin. Pretty interesting. And you can probably get your money back, right? If it's, a, you know, attractive enough artwork. So this is the work I put up. Uh, it was uh, nine kilobytes and it cost me 2250. Like, so, uh, yeah. So, and here it is. And I just delight in how small this is. Right, this is maybe I think 330 by 330, maybe or 340. It's not a perfect square, I don't think. Uh, but you know, and as Rada has always pointed out, with uh, nearest neighbor transform, I can just make leave it small at eight 8.9 kilobytes, and then you know it will always be able to be made larger on a different you know at any time. So you don't need to make it, you know, 2x or 3x the size. Mech.txt also 
And let me actually close the mempool because it's constantly uh, eating up data here as I work on my phone. Uh, so mech.txt, one of one auction on Ord City. A million sats highest bid by pseudo right, six hours left, so I don't know how much that is. A collaborative effort from Skull NFT community amongst many other great artists invited by the great Knox556. So very cool. Uh, and uh, so here is the work. So also, so mech.txt going on ordinals here. Speaking of mech, this very fun uh, project here, uh, Digital Hieroglyphs. Uh, one of my favorites of the last year has been this project where you write on your keyboard and it gives you, it's like the web dings and here you see it. Uh, you type on your keyboard and you get images. So kind of like digital hieroglyphs as Mech is pointing out. Here is another, uh, just this one's got a real Ultima feel to it for some reason, which I think was one of the main inspirations here, visually speaking. Uh, but a slightly, as you see down here, a different ratio. So instead of it being square, it's kind of a two to one. So being creative there in the ratio, the, in the pixel ratio, I think you'd call it. So very cool there. And just another one for good measure here uh, from Mac, making it his own, uh, some nice columns here and everything in that kind of computer, that computer green from the 80s, the Apple IIe, as many of you know that many of you know. Who is it? John Cates. <laughs> Shout out to John Cates. All right, object.com. Announcing the launch of the Object Gallery with the exhibition Matter and Data during Art Basel. And yeah, Basel. I was corrected on that very early on when I moved to Berlin. It's not, not Art Basel. It's Art Basel. Just so you know. A little tidbit there. The inaugural exhibition of the Object Gallery will take place at the Digital Art Mile at Space 31 on June 10th to 16th in Basel, which is in three or four weeks. The exhibition will also be presented online on our platform. Matter and Data highlight 17 artists that explore the tension between the imma immateriality of the digital and the embodiment of or physicality of matter-breaking stereotypes around digital art, more specifically NFTs and a Anna Livia Cordero, the inventor of cybernetic choreography and one of the most significant pioneers of digital art, will present an interactive installation with live minting powered by object. Regina Silvera, one of the most important names in Brazil visual art scene, adapts one of her works from the 1980s into an animation. Zancan, Cubibian. I haven't heard, to be honest, about most of these people. Uh, I've heard of Zancan. I should, I, you know, I vaguely have heard of Anna Livia Cordero. I uh, haven't heard, but most of these, I was looking earlier, most of these names, actually, I haven't heard, uh, which is interesting. Rod L. Warner, I have heard. Salawaki, of course. Viola Rama, I think, yeah. Viola Rama. So anyways, uh, something interesting. Uh, we'll have to uh, see it when it loads up on object. But, you know, pretty cool. That object is at uh, Art Basel and kind of trying to do some, uh, I'm sure there's a lot of interest out there. And you know what's interesting? As long as this computer doesn't crash, we're going to see RJ, uh, a work that Skomer picked up. This beautiful work we were looking at it last week, I brought it up again, with these almost moonlight colors. I mean, 30 Tezos. You know, where's the value right now? You know, when I look as far as like, what are you going to do with your investment money? You know, with Tezos, and it's not financial advice because it hasn't really worked out too well for many of us Tezos collectors, to be perfectly frank, from a financial point of view. But I still look at the value, and I am uh, still really impressed right now. I think it's worth it to keep your eye on Tezos art, like getting one of ones from RJ for 30 Tezos. People were spending up to like 700 Tezos, not that, a few months ago. Right, so just interesting. Kika Nicolela, curator at Object One, if I'm not mistaken, when I see instructions to buy certain drops, you need to be in an, in an, in an allow list, then you need to buy in a certain time frame, then you need to reserve in advance the piece you like, etc., etc. Am I the only one that finds this extremely tiring? Do collectors really enjoy this? Yeah, so this is kind of typical for those that are watching that maybe don't know this is kind of typical for the crypto scene to do these like 
you know, you better hurry. And like this almost like a toxic relationship where it's like you have to do this and you better, you know, by the end of it, you know, just tell me what to do and I'll do it sort of thing. So I think that's what Kika is kind of saying, like all this jumping through hoops. Uh, I find it super obnoxious. And the problem is the people who are going to win are the people with all the time in the world. Like if you're an art artist, like who do you want to own your work? The person with nothing better to do than to jump through all these hoops or the person who doesn't have time for this stuff is making big deals, is, you know, working in the world and doing things who doesn't have time to do all of this stuff. Who do you want your collector to be? And that's so I actually totally agree uh, with this whole to me, it's. Do you want like professional people to be buying your artwork or do you want people who have no all the time in the world? It's just kind of like, you know, so I totally agree with this. And uh, so, yeah. Continuing on, Runetune sent this to me. I thought this was super interesting. And Runetune made the observation. Uh, so this is Robert Crumb, the famous uh, underground comics, C-O-M-I-X, illustrator, Comics artist uh, from the U.S., famous for Mr. Natural, Zap Comics, and Fritz the Cat, which I think was turned into a movie that I didn't see. Uh, Rada has talked about the influence of Robert Crumb on him. And uh, so this came out from the official R. Crumb, and, uh, and it was pointed out uh, by Runetune. Look at how... Crumb is dividing up the cartoonists and illustrators from quote unquote fine art, right? We have Da Vinci, Bosch, Bruegel, Bruegel, and Crumb is sometimes called uh, America's Bruegel by the famous time critic uh, Robert Hughes. He used to call Crumb America's Bruegel, interestingly, within the context of this conversation, because then on the other side, we have these very famous uh, comics artist, Carl Barks. Many of you will know, some of you will know Walt Kelly. Carl Barks, of course, the very famous, I think he might have invented Uncle Scrooge, if I'm not mistaken, uh, in Four Color Comics. Amazingly. Uh, yeah, and the, one of the great artists makes paintings. If we had more time, I would uh, bring them up. I have before. <laughs> I have before. Uh, Norman Rockwell, he considers an illustrator. I mean, this is hilarious. Jack Davis, uh, who, who was in EC Comics. Wally Wood, uh, also EC Comics. Uh, Aline Kaminsky Crum, his wife, hilariously. Uh, so uh, very cool, isn't it? Salvador Dali, in the, but interesting distinction between uh, cartoonists and illustrators and fine, quote unquote fine art. Uh, so just interesting. And there's something else that has to be said here. This is something I haven't talked about since very early in the show, I don't think. But this is what you see here with Crumb putting all the influences on one page. That's something you've seen with Max Ernst in Beyond Painting. We've brought that up again. We'll bring it up again at some point here where he puts uh, Max Ernst's fa favorite uh, poets and artists. And on one side, you have like Shakespeare, you know, etc. and Poe, Baudelaire. On the other side, you have Leonardo da Vinci, uh, Picasso, etc. So uh, we see it with Alfred Jarry, with uh, the life and opinions of Dr. Foster, a pataphysician, where he starts listing the library, where he hilariously puts himself in it, right? A uh, parabou. <laughs> you know, but along with Plato and Poe again and others. Uh, so this is uh, this is something you might consider doing. Let's put it this way. If you're an artist, uh, to put all your, uh, you know, to do something like this. There's a beautiful, very interesting tradition of doing this. This was posted by Rada. This was hilarious. And I thought this was a very interesting and hilarious piece. Of course, life... What is it? Life in Hell by Matt Groening here, inventor of The Simpsons. Before he did The Simpsons, he did Life, I think Life in Hell or Life is Hell. I can't remember. Failure, success. I mean, it's the same thing. Just the paper has a different mark on it. You know, the papers say different things, but nothing has changed. You know, the same kind of anxious person out here in the world. You know, there's the, you know, a few things, the novels in the, in the wastebasket here. It's not. 
but basically uh, just a hilarious piece. Uh, this was interesting. A comp arts. I'm not exactly sure uh, what a comp art is. Let's just look. It's not. Forgive my internet. Forgive my internet. The first Web3 computer art auction something house. So it's a computer computer art auction house. Interesting. This was curated by Elna Frederick and Francoise Gamma, interestingly. Uh, so here are some snippets here. There's a Dan Control. And here, as long as it loads up, Elna Frederick, uh, classic who does a lot of the flashing works there, Pixel Fool. Uh, and who's this? Francoise Gamma. Interesting. And here, I think this is Blue 281. Uh, so very cool there. Uh, here's Dan Control, right? Brilliant work, hilariously. The cold wallet with the lipstick and the dentures. Chris Wood, and here, this looks like Gozo. I haven't seen that one, and uh, and more, Sean Luke. So just kind of interesting, Element Lee, Dream Corridor. So Element Lee continues to do quite well. Again, this thing is probably minuscule, a couple of kilobytes, I'm imagining, in size. That would cost you like five bucks, I bet, to mint on Bitcoin right now. So, yeah, that's kind of got me preoccupied. And look at this, Ugo Digi. So here, we can't go through everything here. This looks like RJ. Interesting mix, isn't it? Very interesting mix of artists here. And this looks like Datura. I think I brought this up. Yeah, it is, Datura. So as you see here, I'm using a ton of data here to go through this. So I'm going to close that. Uh, Rennie Fish. Dear bug friends, look at it. I, I don't think we've looked at this, but I saw it a couple of weeks ago, a little bit of a preview. Dear bug friends, in one week, we'll start the pre-order of my first solo art book, sometimes mind-blowing, thanks to a very cool opportunity with Snap Collective World. I'm feeling real nice about it and just wanted to share again. So I don't know. Look at this. And we're discussing how print kind of builds credibility. And it does. You kind of see it right here. And you go, if you saw this in a store, you'd be like, wow, look at what Rennie Fish is doing. Pretty impressive. If you're a collector, you say, maybe I take another look and maybe I pick up a couple. Uh, so very cool. This is just a uh, something that happened on mid-journey here. I put myself into a mid-journey picture. I still can't believe how easy it was. So, uh, so here's the original picture. And then here's the person. And then they put themselves into, the, into here. I mean, so that's pretty cool. Just kind of interesting developments with AI. Uh, let's continue. Art in progress. So here is Walk, and we'll see if this loads up. It does. So Walk in the studio here, and just a window onto how Walk does it, and wearing the mask as Walk should. And here's another one in the studio, Selfie. And <laughs> and here uh, just looks like a bunch of celebrities doing a selfie here. So just awesome uh, from Walk. So a few studio shots. And we saw this from Demon Ego before. But I don't think we saw it uh, quite so in depth here, uh, the demon ego in the studio. So just cool. And there, that is what I wanted to highlight there. Uh, you see how actually small some of these works are. Two A4s, which is A3, actually. Uh, so very cool there. Into the works we go. His dribble waffle dropping a few uh, works. There's also some that I wasn't able to bring up because of data and time and crashing computers uh, on foundation, but I will in the next show uh, if I can find them. So uh, GTFO, short for something. And I thought, look at just the fun. I mean, it was tempting. I've started the show so many times with this dribble waffle. It was getting tempting uh, once again with a work like this, which is just so much fun. But uh, here we are. Uh, just beautiful grass and everything. Someone screaming at, you know, this monster to get off the lawn. Uh, edition of one at auction for only 20 Tezos. Ah, heck, on the scene. So you see how you can recognize almost all the collectors right now? You know, if you have conviction in this scene, uh, it seems like a really good time to buy is kind of how I feel about it. And I could be totally wrong and everything, but... I don't feel like there's a ton of competition here other than the kind of, you know, locals, you might say, on Tezos. Uh, so a lot of deals to be had out here. Life Coach with some writing in the back there. It's a family program, so I won't read it. Uh, but just a beautiful, 
uh, distortion and just kind of imp semi-impressionistic digital artwork. A beautifully, loosely done work here uh, by Hasdruba Waffle. Life Coach, comma, interestingly, at 48 Tezos. Uh, so all being put for auction. Here's another one, Deliverance at 20 Tezos. And Ah Heck also trying to... And so I'm not sure how much time is left. Uh, but interesting piece here from Waffles. Look at how big it is. And these great teeth. Uh, really uh, just awesome. Just awesome. So there are deals to be had out there. Let's see how much uh, time is left in this auction here. 10 hours and 15 minutes. You still have time. So beautiful work from Waffles. And Nuff1914 continuing to put out these beautiful... Uh, after a lot of experimentation we've seen from Nuv, and there still is, but it's really interesting to take that experimentation that Nuv1914 has been doing and then ground it back into like, I'll just do a kind of landscape, so to speak, or a couple of people sitting on a dock, romanticas, and bringing that experimentation, because what it does is it kind of meets you halfway. You don't need to, like, it, then all of a sudden, it's almost like in techno, to give a very distant analogy, it's like if you were to mix and mix, and one of the techniques, say, that Jeff Mills will do, for those that know, is to the techno gets drier and drier and more percussive and, and harder and less melody and less melody. You know, think of Liquid Room, that mix uh, volume two or whatever. And then all of a sudden, then the melody comes in after, you know, and it's like water in the desert. Aesthetically speaking, this is kind of similar. You know, Nuv was pushing it, pushing it very abstract. You can hardly like, is this a work of art or is this just some lines on a page? And then brings it back uh, to something like this. This is almost like water in the desert. All of a sudden you've been challenged so hard. Then you can go back and you go, this is still super experimental for those that have never seen Nuv 1914's work. But for people who have been following, all of a sudden it's like, oh, this is easy. This is great. Look at how, you know, I could put this on the wall, right? Now, Line Extension here has been buying everything. Uh, so there are very uh, targeted here, owner Line Extension, uh, which are great buys. I mean, they're still only going for 10 Tezos, beautiful bike ride and a landscape. I mean, who knows? But these could be worth fortunes one day. I mean, theoretically. Uh, I don't know. Uh, but, like, these are beautiful. Uh, Vesinus, uh, I think you pronounce that, line extension. So uh, so people are kind of able to collect here. Look at these, how beautiful this is. Like, I mean, this is a stunning work of art. It's not easy, by the way, for those that are maybe seeing this artist for the first time. For those that have followed this artist, this is actually super easy, way easier than normal, and just gorgeous. Look at this great frame off-green frame, and here are a couple of mushrooms. So just loving this. Musical. One of one. Original artwork for 10 Tezos. Trippy collector. Uh, you know, diving in there just in time. Probably had to be super fast about it. Line extension. Uh, it looks like gardening here. Uh, just gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous work. From Nuv1914. I'm going to have to try and connect my Kukai wallet. Uh, maybe I'll go through Safari, because it seemed to be working through another account. Maybe I'll do that. My secret account. Qu I put secret in quotes because it's not that secret. Zozo, keeping thoughts uh, from yesterday can give you a bad mood. I prefer moments of happiness. You know, so pretty experimental here. Uh, just awesome work here from Zozo. So another still, interestingly, like, look, so very challenging, but still quite delightful uh, work here from Zozo. This is an edition of one for only 12 Tezos, uh, and not sure what happened here. Sale, and now for sale again. Not sure what happened there. Looks like still available. Uh, continuing on, this, this potion will change, and this is a family program. So this is uh, Kudu Cola. Interesting different kind of work here from Kudu Cola, kind of like this 3D sculpting. I feel like Waffles has maybe used, and maybe Mo, S-H-I-T, has used this software. Uh, like, look at the tree. Uh, so almost like this CGI-type software, but painted with it, seemingly. This is on Zora, two minted so far. Interesting piece. 
Maybe you can guess the artist, Martin Bruce, with another stunning digital painting here. And you can even see it looks physical here, but then of course you see other areas and you go, this must be digital. Uh, a great hybrid. Another great hybrid from Martin Bruce. Uh, so this is uh, posted yesterday. I don't think we've seen this one. And look at these wild forms. Such an interesting artist and these beautiful brush strokes. Gorgeous, provocative, mysterious. Oh, let's see if this works. So I was having issues. Uh, we'll see if this loads up. And it'd be really unfortunate if it didn't. This is Mumble Boy. And as you see, these are the kinds of challenges I am running into here. There may be a few other images. Oh, it showed up. It showed up. Dimensional Skewer, one of one for 12 Tezos. I'm so glad. Uh, check it out. So again, working kind of physical and digital, here is Mumble Boy with a super interesting one of one. Great color. Uh, kind of has that 1980s kind of neon uh, vibe. Dimensional Skewer, edition of one. Again, 12 Tezos. Uh, very cool. Inside a dreamy beach house designed for easy living. I don't think we've seen this. This is from Yuri J edition of 15 uh, for 10 Tezos and seven are purchased so far. And let's take a closer look. So inside a dreamy beach house. So kind of classic, different kinds of, you know, effects on effects, I believe, from uh, Yuri J. <laughs> look at this awesome TV here. You see like the TV light almost looks like a video game. There's that wild hat. Where's the octopus? That is my only question here. Uh, so very cool. Maybe went up the ladder. Uh, just beautiful beach scene. Kind of a nice summer work. Uh, May 19th, 2024. New work from Yuri J. Here is LXTXCX VIP Club 2003. Kind of a vaporwave net art kind of fusion, if I had to guess. Also a bit of a print feeling to it. Uh, from this artist. We've looked at them before and you see some kind of internet icons there within these kind of interestingly textured, almost as if, as if they're printed out, uh, kind of, uh, uh, what's the word on pastels, you know, almost like this pastel-esque work. Edition of one and sold uh, to Nikotez collection. And here is Wasteman Goldminovich Provost, which I think is a someone uh, higher up in the university system, if I'm not mistaken. Kind of a wild, surreal work here with, you see kind of the burger from Wasteman Goldminovich, and we were kind of seeing this thing before, I think. So interesting experimentation here from Wasteman Goldminovich with the nose turning into a palm tree at McDonald's at night. Wild one. Edition of one for 333 Tezos from Wasteman Goldminovich. RJ, Moonscreen. This beautiful work sold for only 30 Tezos. So if you're on Tezos right now, deals are to be had. One of these beautiful kind of screensaver RJ works. The color is uh, fabulous. And also the composition and this kind of painting of space. Just love it. Uh, 30 Tezos, nice one. Uh, here is Uxin on Zora. I think doing 24 hour mints, I think is what Uxin is doing, still getting 292. So making a nice, uh, generating some good income there. And here is a figure with a sickle and a cold storage crypto wallet and with an angel kind of leading the way here, perhaps an angel of death, interesting piece. Uh, 0, 0, 0, 0, dead. Now on secondary for 0 0.003. Unique Minters, 193. So some people buying more. Uh, very interesting. And also, Copy Others, Be Ordinary, also by Uxine. This is only 1150, edition of 66. And let's just make that big. So interesting. Be Ordinary, Uxine, and uh, cool work here. Again, nice use of GIF to get different variations of the flame. And then cool, kind of drawing out the pixels and everything, kind of a looser style. Uh, nice work from Uxine. And you see the influence of the zine culture on Uxine, even in the composition here, or the addition of the four corners there. Uh, only 1150. 
uh, pretty reasonable uh, for uh, for an Uxian. And here is another work by Uxian, kind of also kind of loosely zine zine esque magic. And you wonder if this is based on Uxian's older work, and maybe he's animating it and just kind of putting it online uh, for content. You see how well it's working for Human Boy, growing the audience just by putting works. It's not like Human Boy's putting a link in there, right? Uh, so, but just building this huge audience. Uxian, another work by Uxian, kind of looks like the car we saw before. Uh, I'm not sure exactly what's going on here, but kind of semi-crucifixion. <laughs> Uh, I don't know what's going on here, but it's uh, pretty funny. Uh, yeah, so, and here, this screams Jack Kirby. This just screams Jack Kirby's Fourth World from the 1970s. Uh, I feel like I've seen this panel before, even the composition. I do not know, though, so kind of working with the, a square kind of brush here, uh, maybe some spacing in the brush, maybe some effects, not sure. Uh, nice piece, zoom in. And then uh, kind of a crypto art style eyes with the hose here. Uh, interesting work from Uxine. Here's Ed Marola, Fancy Dead Dancer. And look at the great textures here on this digital artwork. Kind of, again, you're starting to see what looks like, uh, especially here, uh, Procreate. You know, mixing Procreate with uh, digital, with maybe a Sprite. I'm guessing kind of a wild work here. What's the name of this fa fancy dead dancer? Uh, interesting. Grab it free at tesserart, uh, xyz. So interesting work. Here's another RJ work, Wired Connection. And this came out May 17th. So RJ back on the scene here and doing some experiments with these uh, kind of outlines that are sh shimmering outlines here. Got one that's red, one that's green. And then here it looks like this is not based on another, usually it's pastiche, not this time. Here's Blue Retina, Builders on Break. So classic Blue Retina colors here, blue and red, and then kind of a almost reminiscent of those kind of 1930s, I think, or 1920s New York uh, shots of people eating lunch, you know, high up uh, above New York City, uh, the construction workers. Uh, so cool work, nice texture, nice piece. This is on... Uh, on object for 29 Tezos, edition of 11, and they are or sold out at 11 Tezos each now, 29 on secondary. Sui Soichi, Experilofine season is taking a while, just cool experimentation here uh, from Sui Soichi. And where, what are we at? 52 minutes. we got to speed up a bit. Uh, here's Daniel W. Good night. Just a work I hadn't seen before from Daniel W. Uh, just nice black and white work. Uh, cool. A lot of Daniel W characters there. Another black and white work. This is Flora Marquez. Look Mum 4. Shout out to Mom. A ladybug of some kind of strange insect being filmed with a very good macro lens. Beautiful work. Nice black and white work from Flora Marquez. Nice kind of mushroom. Almost looks like the Flora Marquez character. Uh, and beautiful uh, just drawing here. Nice black and white work. Kind of looks like an ink drawing. These are older, but I thought I'd add them anyway. A uh, crystal spaceship. I just came across these on uh, X, and I just thought they were pretty cool. Uh, so why not add them in? Uh, it's an artwork by Julie Rose, whose work I'm sure we've seen before. Uh, and this was done in 2022, edition of 100. Still 33 Tezos. Look at how big it is. We have another one. Uh, this is also from 2022, edition of 100 and 33 Tezos on secondary. So cool illustrations from Julie Rose, who goes under Crystal Spaceship, digital artist between galaxies. Here's Berku or Byram, the story of red. So cool abstract here from Berku or Byram. And this is for Tezos, edition of five, nice abstract. Here's another one, Ruslan Vyaltsev, GM in the name of art. So this may be older, not sure, probably. Cool, again, what I call the sketchbook style, just kind of juxtaposing different iconographies, putting a nice gradient in the background, just interesting work. Braun with a gorgeous work here, Tropics. And I think this did really well. This was fifth, edition of 15, selling out at eight Tezos. So nice, uh, nice draw for Braun and just a really cool work. We've looked at quite a few works by Braun in the past. So this is 100% and uh, really cool, just kind of pixel art 
or pixel abstract art, you know, or abstract pixel art is I think what we'd call that data mosh and dithering over stable diffusion. So very interesting. I mean, in theory, you can turn everything into like kind of pixel art, uh, pixel art by doing that as the final step in your process, kind of interestingly. Uh, and that may be where all of this comes together, interestingly. Like maybe at, by step four, you're not there yet. And then step five kind of brings it all together. Great color, by the way. Just interesting work. Uh, Yuri J with a few more, some abstracts here. Uh, very interesting abstracts by Yuri J. So here's one. Look how beautiful that is. Edition of one, 40 Tezos. Here's another one, puzzle edition of 20 for one Tezos. And let's take a closer look. Looks like using some noise. And here, like I could recognize this easily as a Yuri J without uh, looking at who did it, uh, which is always kind of a good sign. Recognizable. And look at these great, all the work that goes into this. Uh, interesting corners there as well. 40, 40, tez, 40 Tez edition of one. Here's another edition of one uh, for 49 Tez. Tezos almost looks like a palm tree but not sure. So just interesting abstracts, great title. The Shield of Achilles, that's great. A second line, of course, The Shield of Achilles, is it an entire book of the Odyssey is based, just describes The Shield of Achilles? It's been a while since I've read uh, The Odyssey, but I'm pretty sure there's an entire book, if I'm not mistaken, uh, which is quite something, or at least it goes on for pages, what's going on in Achilles' shield. Second line, Another interesting work here. Uh, so they go really well together as a series too. ADAD owns this one, picked it up for 40 Tezos. Nice work. Here's another one. First line, Yuri J and a green one. And I think still available. So just interesting abstracts from Yuri J. Uh, addition of seven for four Tezos. Here is Santiago. No one can tell you what squirrel core was. And here we have a massive, another massive work here. Uh, I dare, yeah, that's what I thought. Remember, I was just talking about how the final uh, step can be this kind of pixelation process. That seems to be what's going on here, which adds a whole kind of cool dimension to these works. And there are several uh, that Santiago has done. So this is addition of 10 for 10 Tezos and already three gone. And here's another one by Santiago. This is May 21st. Going to love the colors on this one and looking like a, what looks like a digital drawing. And again, kind of uh, hearkening back to an earlier series of just these marks, uh, Sunflower. Very nice work, and this is an edition of one, and I think it was just transferred. And Kristen Roos, Atari artist, just love this title. This is another work that could have started this show. There's so much good art, I would argue, that's coming up, coming out. Uh, so Kristen Roos, uh, you know, uh, working a lot with the retro tools or vintage software. As, uh, and really doing the series paint, uh, showcasing different uh, artist software, uh, paint programs created with Atari artists for Atari XL XE series computers, 1983. This one's quite beautiful. You gotta love the texture on this. And you wonder sometimes how, sometimes there's an emulator, sometimes it looks like uh, Kristen Roos has taken photos, which creates a whole other effect of taking photos of these old screens. Uh, here's another one, Kristen Roos, Atari 400, 800. This is edition of 89, 75 Tezos on secondary. So doing quite well. Uh, selling out at three Tezos each. So bringing in a few hundred Tezos, two or 300 Tezos. Blazing Paddles, here's another one, edition of 10. Very cool to have the menus, which Kristen often does in these works. And you see how wild some of these, again, Blazing Paddles is the name of this software. So there's an essay that I highlighted on a, that's on Kristen Roos's website. Here's Fantavision for Apple IIe. Of course, we've seen uh, Waffles, his Dribble Waffle, as well as uh, Bite by Bit. You did a ton of work on Fantavision. So here is a black and white work by uh, uh, of using Fantavision on the Apple IIe by Kristen Roos. And again, if you go to Kristen Roos's website, you'll find a whole essay that showcases almost what looks like a pretty comprehensive list of vintage softwares. Here's Sophia Ogura. I love this piece, Delorum Ipsum. Uh, just a great uh, work here. 
it's so original, kind of like a drawing, but then you have all this glitchery, this digital glitchery and texture. Uh, almost looks like a spy versus spy. You see the verses here of these two characters. Uh, wild, and then these interesting characters here, uh, letters. Uh, just a enigmatic work. And this is a, an edition of six for 580. As we hit the one hour mark, I need to continue to speed through this. Muji, Enigma, uh, very interesting surreal artwork here. Uh, steps, a sword, maybe an egg, maybe a rock, some planets in the background, nice colors as usual. And then you have like this lava river going through it, a wild enigma, indeed it is. Uh, and so that was burnt, but there's probably a newer one. RJ, again, echoes. So kind of going back to some earlier series, RJ, uh, here's screens. You follow a sound you don't recognize and find a litter of abandoned screens. Could have been, uh, this was also picked up for 30 Tezos, by the way, uh, to Oxwes, 0x Wes, and addition of one for 30 Tezos. So a lot of deals out there. And RJ, of course, going back to a few different uh, series. Interesting. Maybe works that were just on the computer, you know, uh, you know, that never made it to the final cut at first. And then sometimes that happens. And then you go back and you go, I love this work. Uh, one of my favorites, you know, if that can happen to you. Dandelion, dandelions, this is brain dead. And so a pixel artwork with fans showing flowers that look like they're on a huge painting and perhaps a museum. And there is a Interestingly, kind of like a uh, rope or a guardrail of a certain kind, uh, keeping the fans back. So I guess this is like fans. So a pun, maybe, on uh, fans, perhaps. Not exactly sure. Uh, cool work. From Brain Dead, edition of 20 for 6 Tezos, 66 Tezos cents. Anis Abdon, again, putting out a ton of work. Uh, here is a beautiful sunset, of course, often working with nature. Sun Moon is the name, almost looks like an eclipse. Nine colors, posted a day ago. Here's someone else on Instagram, 8pixel, Peaceful Day. Uh, just a beautiful pixel artwork as well. Uh, interesting clouds here too, great color uh, palette. Here, another pixel artist, actually two, P1 and Manidal, another collaboration, The Perfectionist, hand pixelated and animated, original dimensions 171 by 171. Again, uh, screams Bitcoin. Uh, so beautiful uh, work here, and kind of looks like the William Tell with one cat pointing and trying to get the apple. <laughs> and you're waiting and getting more stressed out there as time goes on. Uh, addition of 30 for three Tezos. Here's another one, uh, Green Ginger, Contingent to Paradise. Interesting title, kind of looks like a portal of an ap apocalyptic scene uh, going to somewhere with a little bit nicer weather. That is 250, edition of 15. Here's Renato Marini, our collab could break the internet. And so again, some kind of Windows 95 type iconography, but then illustrated. Uh, so very cool work framed. Uh, so interesting piece, kind of broken apart, leaking. Uh, our collab could break the internet. That's great. Edition of one for 70 Tezos. And here's Mo with an interesting pixelated work. Uh, kind of looks like maybe perhaps one of Mo's AI artworks that have just been pixelated out. Interesting experiment here. I quite liked just this kind of hard contrast. Uh, just interesting to look at. Here's Pomelo. Let's see. Uh, I think no volume here. This is a wild one. So trying to go to the kitchen is the title. Kind of a claustrophobic work. You feel like you're too close, right? But it's almost as if like the camera is on the glasses or something. Uh, just kind of, again, a claustrophobic, uh, very interesting artwork from Pomelo. Trying to go to the ki kitchen, edition of 10, two Tezos. And it is good I'm not doing the spaces today. Otherwise, I'd have to cut this show off. Uh, so you wouldn't believe the hurdles I've had to jump through today. You just would not believe it. Anyways, let's continue. Macrometry Antenna. Uh, cool work. Very cool work. Uh, so nice piece. This is on X from Macrometry. Cool title. Uh, Lorna Mills. Not sure if that was minted anywhere. So Lorna Mills, we looked at this work the other show. It has been minted, though. Uh, beautiful work. So this is on object now. 
uh, just a beautiful work. Love the blue and the blue and the car. I love the subject. I love the masking. Uh, Sleeping Potion, another great title, again, coming from uh, Racehorse Names and selling out at 20 Tezos, so bringing in 600 Tezos. So still delivering the bread and butter uh, Tezos, right? Silva Sand 2 is two guys, one glitch. And here, uh, an interesting glitch ROM from uh, Silva Sand 2, Shadow Warriors NES. Some more interesting glitch ROMs, only edition of four. Uh, so interesting small series. Here's someone called Overmelted Buckets. Uh, so interesting. So an artist I don't think I've seen before. Not sure where I came across this. Uh, so one player, two players. So again, playing with the welcome screen. So another ROM glitch artist and selling out at a Tezos. There's Kyle Flemmer. I think Kyle Flemmer had put up a tweet of... Uh, of and here, let me see if we can get a better... I'm taking a risk here by because this might not load up at all. Here we go. I, I think Kyle Flemmer put out a tweet thread which wasn't loading up, I was trying. Look at how cool this is. I think this is our milk. Love the music. It's super fun, beautiful. Kyle looks like it's using a few different uh, processes. processes. Uh, this doesn't look like one software. It looks like it's using a few different processes. It's looking great. That's our milk 88, catch a little sketch of my mind. Very cool, that looks ready to go. Francois Gamma, CLS2, who's been putting out a lot of interesting kind of experimental pixel artwork. I mean, experimental as usual, but still uh, like not typical Francois Gamma work, at least that what I've seen. Uh, so another really interesting piece. Love the direction, uh, edition of 31 for three Tezos. Here's Renki, who continues to keep it original here. Continues to dazzle. Uh, Renki's fans and viewers, uh, just another interesting one, edition of one, not listed yet, as typically Renki does, Senda, edition of one, also not listed, so another one, a little bit more texture in this one, or digital texture, uh, so cool work, black and white and gray, uh, and very cool. Nicholas Sassoon, Stillness, kind of has almost a renaissance type composition here, and you see this almost... Uh, Grand Canyon type, you know, landscape and this beautiful cycling textured color here. And there it looks like a mountain in the background. So another landscape. Interesting kind of framing device from Nicholas Sassoon. 8,000 views, pretty good. 67 uh, retweets. Here's Datura with some new work. And let's see if we can make that bigger. Well, we sure can. Look at this. So that worked out well. Uh, so Datura, and this is on Instagram. And here's a still. So, uh, very cool work here. Rain 06. This is part of that uh, uh, art uh, show we were seeing before, a comp arts, the computer art. Here is Kiro, Spy vs. Spy. Maybe we looked at this one. Uh, or this is a different version of Spy vs. Spy. So this is on Foundation. Look at how minimal this is. I love this minimal kind of glitch work. There's something quite uh, poetic about it. Uh, so this is on base. Here's another one, less minimal, Agriculture, I'm assuming is the name. I'm not sure if this is full uh, resolution or not. It's probably not. This may be, uh, but it could be. Uh, that may be, I'm again using the phone for internet, so some of these files, we may be stretching my phone to capacity here. Another beautiful, uh, what I'd call video painting from Kiro. Uh, so cool work here. What is that called? Dripolv? Drip Dripolv? So cool work there. Here's another one. Audio muted. Uh, is there audio? No audio. So again, kind of minimal colors. So all sorts of different works. Unfortunately, again, I think we're on low resolution here. That could be my phone. That could also be foundation, which maybe does progressive loading there. And here's one more. Uh, so cool, different kind of artworks. It's funny how you can't tell <laughs> if it's low resolution. I assume it is, but I'm not positive. Uh, so cool work here from Kiro across the board. And here's another one. Another one. This is also on base. Uh, so all sorts of really cool experimentation. 
Now this, let's see if this loads up. This is a tricky one because it's, I believe, if I remember, oh no, this is not the one I'm thinking of. This is cool though. Uh, this is that pinball guy. Uh, great texture in here. Cool work. I just thought super original. You kind of have some text in here, different kind of digital. Looks like mixing, maybe exporting. ASCII by TPG, by the pinball guy. Edition of one for 20 Tezos, very interesting piece. Here's uh, Klaus on Zora. So of course we followed Klaus's, you know, over 200 compositions. And now on Zora, I'm not gonna kill my phone data because it might cost me like $2 just to load this. And we've shown probably 100 of Klaus's works recently. Anyways, Klaus is on uh, Zora. So cool, it's cool how, again, Klaus is bringing a different format to a new, a new blockchain, you know, not doing the exact same series, which I think is really cool. Ripple Ball, cool uh, title. And let's continue. Uh, this is the one that I'm not sure is going to load by Louis. This is a 3D sculpture, which tends to be uh, pretty heavy files. So we'll see if this loads up. We'll give it uh, just a couple of seconds. It may not load up. And again, this is probably costing me... Uh, <laughs> But it, it could show up at any moment here. Again, the rent is excessive. It's too bad. Maybe if I click on Louis's profile, we can see it's small. It's, yeah, so a few kind of interesting, I think it's one of these. These are pretty cool. Uh, so again, yeah, unfortunately, yeah, it's not loading up. Okay, so uh, sorry about that, Louis. Continuing on, Sulkian. Look at what Sulkian's doing. Uh, I think Trueface was saying how wonderfully weird Sulkian is, and indeed, Sulkian is one of the you know strangest, bizarre artists. Uh, physical distortions, transmissions, and you really see it here. Just a wild uh, artist. Skamra. Uh, this looks like AI uh, with some cart. You know, animation meets AI, or illustration meets kind of AI textures, kind of almost pixelated AI. Pretty interesting. Uh, sketching from Lily Illo has a really nice physical feeling. You know what I'd love to see uh, is an actual sketch. Like, I wonder if that's what this is. Is this an AI or not? Because if this is uh, actual, uh, it's hard to tell these days. But if this is actually physical work, uh, how cool would that be? I would find that incredibly powerful. Um, and it's incredibly powerful as, as it is, but imagine like handcrafted based on AI. Amazing, uh, strange thing. Interesting title here, or a quote, art is the most intense mode of individualism that the world has known. Probably true. And here is the work by Strange Thing with these beautiful textures and colors. And, and this gardener here, this Renaissance gardener, chopping out GM out of the plant. Here's a work by Mikey Wilson, which what looks like a young Bob Dylan, hard to say, kind of nice and painterly. I ain't gonna work on Arthur's farm no more, so I think a reference to Bob Dylan, who looks like is, wow, look at how huge this is. Look at how huge, so clearly AI when you zoom in, amazing. Five Tezos is the price, as you can tell from the guitar, and also their edition of 15. And some nice works by Ile. Look at this. Let's see if this loads up. Uh, beautiful AI artwork, AI paintings from Ile. Still Life. Here's another one. Uh, just beautiful, beautiful work. Here's another one by Santiago, A Bright Memory, but at what cost? So interesting. Uh, another kind of wild AI artwork from Santiago. I believe this is AI. PNG Art. And here's Sarah Kretschmer, Flamo, Flamobster. Edition of 10 for 8 Tezos, and uh, on the market here, a beautiful kind of work with this beautiful chrome kind of flamingo lobster. I guess that's where the title comes from. So shout out to Sarah Kretschmer if she is watching this. 12,000 by 12,000, another huge AI work. These upscalers. We were discussing that a little bit in depth with Clown Vamp last week. Super interesting. Machine with another super interesting work. I assume this is AI uh, mixed with like photo collage. I think this is AI. Uh, I'm not positive though. 
Uh, so uh, just really cool work with what looks like machine uh, skateboarding or roller skating. Who knows what on this wave surfing. Uh, these are brilliant. Uh, as we were discussing, a big shout out to Machine. Thank you for the retweet there. I think that show with Machine at the start may be the most popular show in terms of views on X that I've ever... It was around 27, 28,000 views. That was pretty big, uh, pretty high uh, for this show. Ilya Barabin. So this is with Fake Whale, who actually I need to put a workout for. Uh, this internet thing has slowed me down enormously. So interesting piece here. What's this called? Uh, street photography, uh, aggressor, and photographer. So here is one work. And yes, that's on object.com. Here is Walk, paper magazine. Kind of looks like a meme of some kind uh, with these brilliant, uh, brilliant execution of Walk as usual. And here is Stefan Schwarzer. Screen print polychromos on paper. So is this a screen print? Because you can do screen printing that uh, that small, uh, but it's pretty tricky, or at least it requires a lot of uh, kind of uh, accuracy and technical ability to do this kind of four color screen printing, CMYK screen printing. I think this is a screen print. Stefan Schwarzer, of course, put out a bunch of Rezo prints recently. Check this out, Gu Guerrero Gallery, another interesting gallery. Honk if you love adult contemporary. I guess they had a show called Adult Contemporary, which is hilarious. Uh, abandoned track, acrylic on, abandoned truck, acrylic on canvas. Look at this. So I assume that's acrylic paint, not acrylic ink. Uh, so pretty cool uh, work here. So, you know, a it looks like a painting of pixelation. Uh, Adel Berger, we've looked at their work before, Always Two Tigers, just really beautiful, kind of the sketchbook style, a little bit of space in there, kind of a coherent interior here, but then kind of sketchbooky on top, beautiful, just the noise, the painting, the whimsicality, just the non-finito, uh, the different media, awesome, and speaking of awesome, look at Moto583, Moto Moto Hero, these faces, I don't know how this artist is able to work so simply, yet so powerfully, and just these simple juxtapositions, outrageous and beautiful. I mean, they're beautiful illustrations here. Uh, so just great work. As we continue, here's uh, Enrique Hermes, Bondozo Bandito, Save the Forest, Hate the Machines, uh, just incredibly prolific artist here, uh, and just does not care uh, in terms of, I'll just put some big eyes here. Uh, wild and then looks like a big caterpillar machine. Here's a really cool work. It's not gallery. Paul Robus and it looks like a Bunsen burner uh, all in blue, uh, blue flames. Uh, just beautiful work. Hulk Hogan by Kristen Land and a very textured painting. Uh, I don't know how you get so textured. It almost looks like like, look at this. So it's almost like the texture is done first. It almost reminds me of Art Matter, where the texture is done first and then you kind of paint over top. So it looks like the, it was kind of textured before, but not positive on that. But it kind of looks that way. Like paint, like a painted over painting is actually what that looks like. Hulk Hogan. Here, a uh, controversial one by Michael Pibus, or provocative, shall we say. Almost looks like Mario in there. Uh, with the cactus coming out of the little plant, or the plant coming out of the pot. And of course, probably referring to 9-11, so very provocative work there. And finally, another one from Guerrero Gallery, another great find, this gallery, Henry Fay, Lucille. So Tops, of course, the trading card company. And yeah, like acrylic on panel. So pretty wild uh, work here. Here's another one, a thousand loaded. And you see up close... So pretty wild. I'm not quite sure. I assume this is just kind of treating acrylic kind of like watercolors a little bit, I assume is what's going on here. Uh, pretty original work uh, from that artist. And that is your show, my friends. Thank you for joining me. And yes, no spaces today. I am trying to just stay on top of everything. Put out a show today, period, with all of the internet issues and other issues, computer, uh, you name it, uh, wallet, and more. So thanks for your patience. Thank you for joining me. Hope to put everything back on schedule soon. Hope to show up on Friday. Don't be shocked if for whatever reason it's not there, but I'm pretty sure I will be. Till next time.
Take care.